Hello friends and welcome to today's edition of The Couch. I'm Todd Tyler and today's story is David's Haircut by Ken Ox. When David steps out of the front door, he is blinded for a moment by the white, fizzing sunlight and reaches instinctively for his dad's hand. It's the first really warm day of the year, an unexpected heat that bridges the cusp between spring and summer. Father and son are on their way to the barber shop, something they have always done together. Always the routine is the same. It's about time we got that mop of yours cut, David's dad will say, pointing at him with two fingers, a cigarette wedged between them. Perhaps I should do it. Where are those shears, Janet? Sometimes his dad chases him around the living room, pretending to cut off his ears. When he was young, David used to get too excited and start crying, scared that maybe he really would lose his ears. But he has long since grown out of that. Mr. Samuel's barbershop is in a long room above the chicken restaurant, reached by a steep flight of stairs. There is a groove worn in each step by the men who climb and descend in a regular stream. David follows his father annoyed that he cannot make each step creak like his old man can. David loves the barber shop. It's like nowhere else he goes. It smells of cigarettes and men and hair oil. Sometimes the smell of chicken will climb the stairs along with the customer, and when the door opens, the waiting men lift their noses together. Black and white photographs of men with various out-of-fashion hairstyles hang above a picture rail at the end of the room, where the two barber's chairs are bolted to the floor. They are heavy, old-fashioned chairs with foot pumps that hiss and chatter as Mr. Samuels, the rolls of his plump neck squashing slightly, adjusts the height of the seat. In front of the chairs are deep sinks with a shower head and a long metal hose attached to the taps, not that anyone seems to use them. Behind the sinks are mirrors, and on either side of these, shelves overflowing with a mixture of plastic combs, some plunged into a glass bowl containing a blue liquid, Shaving mugs, scissors, cutthroat razors, hairbrushes, and, stacked neatly in a pyramid, ten bright tubs of brill cream. At the back of the room sit the customers, silent for most of the time, except when Mr. Samuels breaks off from cutting, and takes a drag on a cigarette, sending a wisp of gray-blue smoke like the tail of a kite twisting into the air. When it is David's turn for a cut, Mr. Samuels places a wooden board covered with a piece of oxblood rubbed leather, across the arms of the chair so that the barber doesn't have to stoop to cut the boy's hair. David scrambles up onto the bench. The rate you're shooting up, you won't need this soon. You'll be sitting in the chair, the barber says. Wow, says David, squirming around to look at his dad, forgetting that he can see him through the mirror. Dad, Mr. Samuel says I could be sitting in the chair soon, not just on the board. So I hear, his father replies, not looking up from the paper. Expect Mr. Samuels will start charging me more for your hair then. At least double the price, says Mr. Samuels, winking at David. Finally, David's dad looks up from his newspaper and glances into the mirror, seeing his son looking back at him. He smiles. Wasn't so long ago when I had to lift you onto that board because you couldn't climb up there yourself, he says. They don't stay young for long, do they, kids, Mr. Samuels declares. All the men in the shop nod in agreement. David nods, too. In the mirror, he sees a little head sticking out of a long nylon cape that Mr. Samuels has swirled around him and folded into his collar with a wedge of cotton wool. Occasionally, he steals glances at the barber as he works. He smells a mixture of stale sweat and aftershave as the barber moves around him, combing and sniffing, combing and sniffing. David feels like he is in another world, noiseless except for the scuffing of the barber's shoes on the floor and the snap of his scissors. In the reflection from the mirror, he can see through the window. A few small clouds move slowly through the frame, moving to the sound of the scissors' click. Sleepily, his eyes drop to the front of the cape, where his hair falls with the same softness as snow, and he imagines sitting in the chair just like the men and older boys, the special bench left leaning against the wall in the corner. He thinks about a picture book of Bible stories his aunt gave him for Christmas, the one of Samson having his hair cut by Delilah. 
David wonders if his strength will go like Samson's. When Mr. Samuels is finished, David hops down from the seat, rubbing the itchy hair from his face. Looking down, he sees his own thick, blonde hair scattered among the browns, grays, and blacks of the men who have sat in the chair before him. For a moment, he wants to reach down and gather up the broken blonde locks to separate them from the others, but he does not have time. The sun is still strong when they reach the pavement outside the shop, but it is less fiery now, already beginning to drop from its zenith. I tell you what, boy, let's go get some chicken to take home. Save your mom from cooking tonight, says David's dad, and turns up the street. The youngster is excited and grabs his dad's hand. The thick-skinned fingers close gently around his, and David is surprised to find, warming in his father's palm, a lock of his own hair. Well, once again, that was David's Haircut by Ken Elks. Thanks for stopping by today. As always, I'm Todd Tyler, and this has been The Couch. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Todd's Couch, or you can hit me up on Twitter at Todd's Couch. I'll see you next time here on The Couch.